Hi guys, and welcome back to this Model Engineers Workshop. Today in the workshop, we're not going to be breaking our arms, we're going to be making brake arms. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, we've got three little brake arms to make. Two small ones, one big one. These are parts that go on the brake shaft that we made a couple of videos ago. Each one needs a big hole and a small hole, and then they'll be getting some shaping to make them look pretty. These are all part, all two-part pieces, so we're going to make these parts first, get the holes drilled, then we're going to uh, machine up the bosses that go into the other end, into the big hole. They're going to get silver soldered in, then they're going to go back in the lathe to get drilled out for the brake shaft. And once all that's done, while they're still, these are still square, we've got some cross holes to drill through those bosses and a, a hole for a grub screw. Um, and then once all that's done, then we'll be taking all the excess metal off and rounding off all the corners. It'll be easier to hold these things while they're nice and square because when it comes to cross drilling the boss that's going to be silver soldered into these, these ends, it'll be able just to sit flat in the machine vise and it'll give us something to support as we drill through. Right. We've got a selection of drills to go through today, so the centre drill as always. And um, had a bit of an accident this morning, look at that, cracking. Uh, centre drill, 4mm, 6mm, so that's the small small end small end hole. Then the centre drill, the 6mm, 10mm, and then I've got a brand new 16mm drill here. Uh, they'll be for the big end. Exactly the same operations three times, the only difference is these two holes are further apart, these two are closer apart. All right, guys, I'll get set up in the mill and I'll bring you back. Right, now I'm set back up in the mill. Just got a couple of the rollers there just as a little bit of support, just in it to keep create a bit of free space underneath. They're not acting as parallels, they're just as supports, just in case that decides to drop down. So this is going to be the 16 mil hole. Then we're going to come down here and put in the 6 mil hole. This is all squared up on the end of the vise like I normally do. This centre drill is then centred on the steel and in the right amount so I can just go straight through and we're going to use the DRO move down. So centre drill, 4, 6, 10, 16, move down, centre drill, 4, 6. Uh, I'll, it's, I'm going to film a whole lot, but I'll probably speed up in between the important bits, which is basically the end when I've popped through with the 6mm drill here, but I'm going to zip through the drills till I get to the 16. I've never done a 16mm drill before, so it's going to be interesting. I'll probably have a bit of uh, coolant on there just to spray on, just to keep things happy. And uh, we'll see how we go. All right, here we go, guys. Wow, that was exciting. Never done a 16 mil hole before. Chips are coming off a bit hot. I could have been cutting a bit faster, maybe, or a bit slower. Right, take this one out, and I'll move down and drill the other one, and then I'll bring you back. Oh, look at that. That drill spun a bit, didn't it? Look. You can see that. Yep, there we go. Brand new drill. I've already chewed it up a bit. Come on, focus. 
There we go. Didn't quite have that tight enough in the chuck. Right. Okay. I'll just get that sorted and I'll bring you back once I've done the six mil hole at this end. Uh, distance between these two, 80 mil. Yeah, 80 mil. Just had a look at my little drawing, which you guys can see over here. Alrighty. Bring you back soon. Right. There we go. Three embryo arms, two shorts, one long. Next job now, onto the lathe, turn up the three bosses, and then we can uh, get those silver soldered in, and they're gonna go back into the lathe, mounted, holding the boss in the chuck once they're silver soldered, so we can then drill through for the brake shaft, and, uh, and then we get back to the mill, do all the cross drilling that we need to do in each boss, three bosses, and then it's just a case of putting the shapes on and rounding off the corners. All right, guys, I'm gonna get set up in the lathe, and I'll be back soon. Right, guys, set up in the lathe now. Chunk of steel, tool in the tool post. We're gonna turn this down to, for about 25 mil. This way we're gonna turn it down to 22 mil diameter. Then we're gonna turn a 16 mil uh, by five shoulder onto it. And then we're gonna be parting it off at 19 so that it can then fit into the uh, brake arm that we made last time, which I'll just pick up from over here. So you can imagine that eventually this piece will fit onto the end of there once that shoulder's turned onto it. Right, uh, I'll get this going. I'm probably going to record it real time, uh, but if it turns out to be too long, I'll go into, I'll speed it up when I'm doing the editing. Okay, guys, let's just check that's working too. Two cameras running, so yes, it'll be a bit of split screen. And... Uh, Microphone's turned on, hopefully. Yes, I've got a little green light. Here we go. Time for a quick check. We need to get this down to 22. That's a good fit. Let's have a look. 22.75. 22 22.7. There we go. So 0 0.7 to come off. And then we get the shoulder cut. Check. Not that it's a critical dimension, is this? Again, the drawings tell me I can work to 0.2 of a millimeter, so let's have a look. And see, 22. Actually, quite handy having the camera at zoom. I don't know if it's going to focus for me. There we go. 22. Point. Yep, 22 on the knocker. Right. 
I'm going to just face off the end now because it's still rough, that end. And uh, then we'll start getting the shoulder put on there. So we'll get this running and get touched off and just take a quick cut. <laughs> Quick check just to make sure we're still on target. Yeah, have a look. 17 points. Three. 17.3. Right, here we go. I'm sneaking up on this so it fits the hole so we can silver solder the whole thing together to make an arm with a boss on it. That should now put us very close. Have a look, see. Looking for 16, of course. 16 points. 1.5. Have a quick look in the camera here. So 16 point. 1, 1.5, 16.2. Right, okay. Very close. Let's have the piece now. See if that will actually. Go on, oh, it's so close, is that? So close. Right. I'm going to take point one off and then we'll see if it tries again. And if not, we'll take a bit more. That should be it. Oh, yeah, that, that's nice. That would be a good fit for a. Silver soldering, a little bit of a loose, a little bit rattling there, but that's okay. That'll be silver solder nice then. It's going to get machined up anyway later on. Right, quick tool change, and we'll set up for parting this off. So, I know that the tip of this wrong parting tool, I have to get the right parting tool, it'll help. I know the tip of this parting tool is 2.5mm wide, so I can take that into account when I do my on the dial, so I'm just going to touch off the tool at this end. 2.5 millimeters on the dial is 125 divisions. So I'll just set the cross slide to zero, the compound rather. Wind that out. Go forward 120 divisions on the dial. Re zero it. That brings me up. Flat and level at this end here where my thumbnail is. And we need to go 19 mil that way. 19 mil on the dials is seven full turns and 61 divisions. Okay. What did I say? 761. 761, yeah. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and 61 divisions. All I'm going to do is literally Take this off, flip it around in the chuck once I've made the other two, and uh, just put a clean up cut on the other side. So, parting off, a little bit of got the coolant spray bottle. We'll be doing this under power, nice and easy. So, here we go.
There we go. Parting off nice and straightforward. If you've got the right tool, I suppose. If the right tools, everything's easy. Now, let's see if we can find that bit. Must be, there it is. Underneath, right, that's that bit. One, one, not too bad. There we go, guys. That will fit into there. That will get silver soldered together. Oops, I'll get you in the picture. Right, I'm just going to make the other two like this. I've got to, oh, come on, come on. Come on. Yep, there we go. I've got to make one more this size and one that's 27 total length. That's for the long round. This is one of the shorter ones. Right, once I get that done, I'll get these back in the lathe and I'll just face that bit off. All right, guys, let me do let me do the other two and sort out what we're going to do next, and I'll be back. Right, guys, I've got the other two made now. So you can see this is in the chuck. This is not a very good view, but never mind. I've got camera number two over there, so you'll get a better view. You'll be able to see it's just a very quick cut. There's a little bit of a pip on there, a little bit of a tit, and uh, I'm just going to do a very light cleaning up cut because I've measured these. They're pretty much bang on length. Just to tidy up and get rid of that little bit on the end, a little pip. Right, so let's get this done. I'm going to start the machine, touch off, set in the cut, and just use the power feed and go across. Make sure everything's free. Yep. There we go, guys. Easy as that. I suppose doing one probably took me about I've done three now. Almost three. I've got the other two to do. Take the tit off the pip. That's probably three quarters of an hour's work for the three of them all up by the time, maybe 50 minutes by the time I face that off. So, next job will be to silver solder these into place. Then I'll mount them in the chuck so this bit's actually whizzing round. And we're just going to tidy up. I'm going to put these on the belt limit to get the scale off just to make we get a good clean joint. And uh, then we drill a 13 mil through hole, 13 mil hole through all the way through. And uh, then we go into the mill. As I explained earlier, we have a grub screw to put in. And then we have to cross drill for the brake shaft. So that's why I've left these square so it'll be nice and easy for fitting into the milling machine when we get that far. But anyway, I've just got to get these all cleaned up. These are ready to go. Get some flux sorted out, silver solder, set up the brazing hearth, and uh, get them silver soldered and pickled. All right, guys, back soon. Right, guys, here we are, set up in the brazing hearth. Got the bit that we turned. We're going to silver solder. Got the plate with a hole. I've put this on the belt linisher so that it's all clean the scale off it. I've got it made up some of the flux over here. This is just a powdered flux that you mix with water to a reasonable consistency. It says like cream. It might be thin cream, I suppose. So I'm going to flux this part up and that part in that round the hole, put the two together, rest it gently there, heat the whole lot. You'll probably see the flux boil off and when it starts to look a bit glassy, then uh, it's time to get the silver solder on. I've just put the silver solder down, so I'm just going to have a look for it. That's good, isn't it? Uh, now, where did I put it? Hang on, guys. Back in a tick. Nope, nope, no worries. Found it, found it, found it. Got my piece of silver solder ready to hand, so when I'm ready, a bit of a dip into the flux, and we will get to there. And it will flash all the way around, hopefully. If not, we'll just get a little bit more. Right. Uh, the usual... I'll work while I'm talking. The usual definition or description of when you're silver soldering is to get things up to a bright red, which has been apparently over the years left open to a lot of interpretation. Uh, the new consensus seems to be you need to heat everything till it gets to the colour of a boiled carrot. Well, I'm pretty sure we all know what colour that is. So... That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this up to the colour of a boiled carrot. There we go. Put this in there as well. Tip it over. Give it a bit of a spin round. Get another bit on just so that capillary action will suck it right round. That looks good to me. It's going all the way around now. It's only a break arm. It doesn't need to be super 
super clean. If it, if it runs a long way, I can easily clean it off. Right, guys, so I'm going to get this fired up. I'm going to stop talking. Got my brazing torch ready, so it might get noisy, I don't know. Here we go. Right, not there for desperately successful, I don't think, but uh, definitely hot enough eventually. I'll let that cool to black and we'll quench it off and we'll take a look and then we can get it into the acid bath. All right, guys, just give me a second to let that cool down. Okay, right, so I've done a bit of a cleanup on the back. I can see there's a little bit of silver solder coming through. Could have probably used a bit more to fill in the gaps probably, but that is not gonna come loose. It's solid as houses, so it's gonna go now into the pickle. As you can see, I just put this on the belt, then should just have a look. This will now go in the pickle for a day or so, and it'll take all this black, nasty stuff off. Yep. And uh, I'll get on with the other two, and I'll bring you back after those. You've seen it once, you don't really need to see it again. So, uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's not going anywhere. I'll get a bit more silver solder on the next one, and we'll see if we can get a bit of a better view for you when they're all descaled, de blackened, whatever, out of the acid. All right, guys, I'll get the next ones done and bring you back. Okay, guys, next day, I've had these three sil silver soldered in, in the pickle bath for a day, 24 hours, give or take. No, maybe 20. Uh, I think I need to change the citric acid in the pickle bath. It's not really done too much, so I took a bit of uh, emery cloth and some scotch bright to them just to brighten them up so you can see. Right, so this was the first one. I think I got this too hot. I'll explain in a second. You can see that the silver braise has come through there, so I'm quite happy with that. That's not going to be going anywhere. This was number two. I did the big one, so you can see there's lots of silver solder on the top of that. And again, a nice little silver ring in there, so that one's quite good, nice and solid. It's not going to ever come apart unless you reheat it. This one, number three, got a bit more idea on it. Nice fillet of silver solder around the outside. And a nice, good, you can even see it, good solid ring on this side. Now, in the beginning I said you have to go to the colour of a boiled carrot, which is what I did with this one, which is what I meant by, I think I overheated it slightly. It's still done the job. I don't think it's going to come apart. This one was a dull cherry red. And this one was just a little bit brighter. Uh, I think the name of the game is Enough Heat. And patience. I think I was a little impatient. Well, too long with the heat with this and being impatient, trying to make it go too fast. This one needed maybe a little less solder. You can see it's run all over the shop. And a little more heat. 
And by the time I got to this one, I'd pretty much got it right. So there's not too much on the top, a little bit on the bottom there, but that's not a problem. And uh, it flowed, it just went and just sucked itself straight in. It was great. It was lovely to watch. Right, so now these are going to go into the three jaw. Hold it by the boss. Center drill. Six, ten, thirteen. Because, of course, there's the brake shaft we made a few videos ago with the cross holes. This, these all then, then kind of fit onto the here once we've cross drilled and the pins all locate through the holes that we've already put in. So you can see there's two on one end, one on the other. So I'll get this set up into, excuse the noise while I put that back. I'll stop it. I can hear that rattling. That's annoying. Right. Uh, I'll get this one in and uh, it's not going to affect the silver solder, of course, because we're not actually holding by this. It's not as if it's going to turn this piece loose. Three jaw chuck, get this whizzing around. Be careful because, of course, this is going to be sticking out and we'll get these holes drilled using that system. That way, the 13 mil drill should really only, should cut a pretty good hole because the piece of material I've got over there is 3.8, maybe 3.85, 3.9, uh, as best I can measure it. So there'll be just enough working clearance. And of course, yeah, it will all get drilled and grub screwed and pinned together later on. Right, I'll get you back once I'm into the lathe and all set up, guys. Here we go. Okay, guys, all set up. The chuck is free. As I say, you've got to be careful because, of course, this is sticking out. You can just about see that through my fingers. Right, let's do this 113 mil hole coming up. Changing now to the 10 mil drill, I'm just going to get this in the chuck down. I'm going to drop the speed down. I think 1200 RPM is probably a little bit too fast for a 10 mil drill. And once I change to the 13, I'll drop it down again a bit more. Let's see what the numbers are on the lathe in a second. That's that one in. Let's have a look. See, we're on 1200 at the moment. 700 sounds about right, I think. So we go to an A3. Sounds about right. Let's have a look. Yep. Right, let's give that a whirl and see how we go. Right, that was pretty good. Let's change over to the 13 there. Get that in place. And as I say, I'm going to drop the speed down again. We'll see how we go. So let's have a look. 700 to 550, 330, B2. That sounds about right there. Out there, that feels about right. The chuck is still free. Yep. Right. Let's uh, see how we go with this one. Maybe I've gone a little bit faster. What's that? 3.30. I'll try 5.10 on the next one. You're limited, of course, to the sizes that the, drill, the uh, machine, the speeds the drill machine will give you. So let's just try this bar. Mm, a little bit loose. I might need to remake the bar. Okay. Right, just give me a second. Hang on. Well, that 13 mil drill has managed to drill 13 point, 
four, five, maybe five. That's great, isn't it? Wonderful. No, ah, obviously not. Right, okay. I'll... What to do now? Right, I'll have to think about that one, guys. I'll uh, get the others. Do I drill the others or do I redo this one? This is, this is the one I overheated. I could probably melt that back out and make a new bush. Right, I'll leave it there for now, guys, and I'll get back to you. Right, guys, this is taking longer to do than I thought it would, so it's going to be a very long video. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to split it in two now. Next time we'll finish off the brake arms, you'll see how I fix a 13 mil drill, having drilled a 13 and a half mil hole. So this is the chef signing out, saying as like I normally do, if you can find it in your heart and soul, just give me a like, subscribe and hit the bell. It would be greatly appreciated. All right, guys, see you next time.